A lot of individuals who simply think, well, you know, God only speaks to preachers and deacons and leaders. But the truth about it is, how many of us have decisions we have to make in life and we have to make them every single day of our life? Major decisions that will change our life and our family and maybe our location, our vocation, and so many things that have to do with altering not only our family, our life, our future. And yet so many individuals think, well, you know, I, I don't know a whole lot about God. I don't know a whole lot about the Bible. And, and why would God want to speak to me? Well, the reality about it is the God who made you loves you and wants to talk to you in an intimate and personal way. I have a 91-year-old precious dad. And in this time that I've had this cold, sinus, whatever it is, he's made it his business to check on me pretty regularly. And uh, maybe not a long time. Don't talk but. You know, back in the years gone by, you know, you talk three minutes and charges went up. So he'll talk about two or three minutes and say, how you doing? How you feeling? Wanted to call and check in with you. Why? Because he wanted to check on his son. Now listen carefully. The God who created you, made you, loves you, wants to speak to you. Better than 1,300 times in the Bible, the Bible uses this phrase, and God said. In other words, God spoke. And uh, a lot of times individuals say, well, what does God want to say to me? There are so many things God wants to say and speak to us about. And the reality about it is we miss out on listening to the voice of God because we miss out on the ways in which God speaks. Now the entire purpose of this message is to raise the level of your understanding so you can learn to listen how God, the sovereign God of the universe, is going to speak to your life. Because if you chalk these off, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on making wise decisions in life. You're going to miss out on hearing the God who loves you with all of his eternal being and eternal nature. I want you to turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. The verses are also on the overhead. I want you to follow along in your copy of the scripture. Now this is the story of uh, Elijah. He's running for his life from Jezebel. And listen to what is taking place. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Watch this. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, stood at the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Why dost thou hear Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even only I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Now this is the back end of the conversation after, after Elijah had stood his ground against the prophets of Baal. And you remember that Jezebel was chasing him to run him down to do him in and to kill him. And uh, Elijah presented himself before the Lord. And the reality about it is Elijah was in a very depressing situation. Elijah was in a situation and he needed to hear from the Lord. How many times have you been in dire straits, you've been in a situation, you don't know what to do, and you need to hear from the Lord? You want to hear from what God has to say because you don't know what to do. You don't know whether to turn to the right or to the left, to go back. You don't know whether to stand still. And here is something that Elijah learned in this time and season in his life. Many times the voice of God is not in the extravagant things. As a matter of fact, we're a world that loves the spectacular. I mean, we love the spectacular. We love extravaganza and all of that. But one of the lessons that Elijah learned is this. When he is going to hear, and if you're going to hear the voice of the Lord God, one, you have to learn to listen. Now, I want to say this to all of us that are gathered here in this sanctuary this morning. You may be saved, and you might have been saved for years, and you've never learned to listen to the voice of God. 
God didn't save you and then just give you your, you know, your desires to go out and do whatever you want. But one of the things that years ago God brought me to understand is I needed to learn how to listen to the voice of God. Because I want to give you some promises. First of all, when you learn to listen to the voice of God, you won't make foolish and unwise decisions. When you learn to listen to the voice of God, you will make immediately wise decisions that will bless you, your life, and your family. And the reality about it is we're still housed in this, in this house of flesh. We're going to be here all the day that uh, we're, until we die. But think about it for a moment. Imagine coming to the end of your life and you have learned the lifelong process of the ways in which God speaks. Now, there are many ways in which God speaks. But this morning, I want to give you Throughout Scripture, and I can tell you in my own personal life, the four basic ways that I have watched God through the years speak, speak very seriously, very deliberately, and very intently. Now, let me say this. If you chalk off that you're not important enough for God to speak to, you may be 10 years old, you may be 12 years old, you may be 15, and you say, well, I'm not that old for God to speak. Yes, you are. Because God loves you and God created you and God has some wonderful things in store for your life. And so when you learn how to listen to the voice of God, you will absolutely be amazed. Now, I want to tell you at the very outset, you're going to want to chalk some of these ways off. You're going to want to say, no, God's not going to use that. Be very careful the ways you chalk off. I have found that God sometimes will speak to me. God's spoken to me through some of you. God has spoken to me through some unique ways. But I want you to follow along in your copy of the outline because I want you to understand this morning how God speaks to us. First of all, God speaks through his word. Now, you would know that. You would understand that. But I want you to listen to Psalm 32, verse 8. And I want you to listen to these first three words. I will instruct. In other words, God said, I'll instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. In other words, what God is saying, he says, I want you to understand that I, your God, the God that made you, the God that loved you, I am going to take it upon myself to give you instruction. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you, when you have ever gotten something from a store, you have got uh, an instruction manual in some type of product, and uh, they say, please refer to instructions first. Well, men, you know what that's like. That's just the manufacturer's idea of how it goes together is, what do you do? You put the instruction manual to the side and you lay over it, labor over it for 10 hours, what could have been done in 30, 40, 50 minutes, and then your wife lovingly, carefully, wisely said, honey, have you by chance read the instructions? And then you don't read them, but she picks the instructions up and says, it says that you should have these tools. Oh, I need tools. And then all of a sudden, in an hour, you say, well, I finally got it done after she has read the instructions. Now, why don't you listen carefully? We are not a people that likes to listen to instructions, are we? Now, let's be real honest. We really don't. Charlotte gave me Stephanie's Barbie car years ago to put together. She was Barbie car, so it's been years. And uh, it was for a, a special birthday. She said, now, you go home, you put that together. It took me forever. Why? Because I realized I didn't want to listen to the instructions. Now, I want you to understand something. God knows that you and I are sight-based people. He knows that you need to look at something to get a reference point on it. And so I want you to look what the Bible says in black and white. This is the Word of God. He said, I will instruct you. In other words, when you're reading the Bible... It is literally the voice of God in printed form. So whenever I'm going to make a decision, God will never guide me to something to do that violates the Word of God. He'll never guide me to make some decision but what God gives me His Word about. I'm getting ready to uh, make a decision. God will make sure. Listen, if you make it your practice to be in the Word, reading the Word, studying the Word, God will give you a passage of Scripture you need right on time. Why? Because He knows you're trying to follow Him as best you know. And so God guides you through His Word. 
He'll guide you through the pages of Scripture. Listen, what happens though, there's a lot of folks who are saying, well, you know what, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to go by my feelings. I feel like this is right. How many of you, don't you dare raise your hand, how many of you have made an important decision based on your feelings? And then you made that decision and you absolutely regret what you did. God will never lead you to make a decision based on your feelings. Why? Because haven't you ever felt cruddy and bad and terrible and horrible just simply because we live in a horrible in this human body? Absolutely. And so God makes it very clear. He'll guide you. And whenever you're in the Word, and I found this in my own life, and you will too, as you're reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, you've got to make a decision. Husbands, you're about ready to make a, a vocational decision. Now you say, well, you know, God's concerned about spiritual things. Listen, you make that wrong decision in your life, and you take that wrong job, and you'll see how it spiritually impacts your family. Uh, I talk to some preachers from time to time, and I talked to some preachers who said, you know what, I wish I had never gone to that church. It's impacted their life, their home, their family, and they're devastated. God says, I'll make it very clear. I will instruct you. I'll guide you. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't want what God says. You know, be honest with you, sometimes we just don't want to listen. We want to go ahead and do our own thing, no matter what God says to us, and and. We just want to come back and cry to God, God, why did you mess my life up? God didn't mess your life up. You messed your life up because you wouldn't listen to God. And the reality about it is, if you're going to choose to not listen to God speak through His Word, let me tell you what I can assure you of. Pain and a lot of it. Problems and a lot of them. Difficulty. And it doesn't matter how much you pray... Those things will not dissipate because God will never answer your prayers if you violate following His Word. He simply won't do it. And uh, I have people coming to me and, and hear people say, well, I don't know what's wrong. Listen, sometimes you don't want to listen to God's Word because it goes against our, our human flesh. And that's a reality. But the Bible makes it very clear in this one verse. He said, I will instruct you. I will guide you. And uh, one of the things that uh, Elijah found out was this. God was speaking to him in a very still and a small voice. Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully. If you're wanting God to speak to you and you want to go away from the Word of God and you want to look for these other three ways, I want to warn you that's unwise. One of the, if you look at a wise Christian, if you look at a Christian who is mature, one of the things that's a, a part of their daily diet is the Word of God. Why? Because they want to listen to what God has to say. You know, I was reading the Bible yesterday, this morning, and, you know, you see so much on social media. That's beside the point. But, listen, here's what God says. Love your enemies. Now, you say, well, what, what does that have to do with my life? That person who's mistreating you on the job, love them. That person who's abusing you on the job, love them. That person who's not doing what, you know, pulling their fair share, love them. Now, here's what I want you to understand. I want you to listen carefully. God is going to make it his business to speak to you through the pages of the Word. And one of the things that God speaks to us about is our soul's condition. Now, I would like to ask everyone in this sanctuary this question. What is your soul's condition? You say, well, you know, I think I'm saved. When you stand in the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't want to say, I think I'm saved. The Bible makes it very clear. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, what? The judgment. You're not going to want to say, I think so. Listen, the Bible says it's appointed, and we're going to have judgment, but the Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. How do you know that you're saved? Because God tells us the way to be saved. Now think about it for a moment. If I did not have the Bible, I could not know about the God that created me. Now let's just extract the Bible from our life for just a moment. And suppose we never had a Bible. How would you know about the one who created the universe? You wouldn't know anything about him, except he's all-powerful. You wouldn't know his personality. 
How would you know about how to get to heaven? How would you know there was a heaven? If you extract the Bible from the, from the universe and man never had it. And you see, God says, I want you to know the truth. I want to instruct you. But listen, if you're going to be instructed, listen carefully. You must be instructable. You say, what do you mean? Do you know somebody you can never teach anything to? There are two types of people that I've found in the world. Teachable and unteachable. There are some people who come to church and they never get anything. They fellowship one with another. They uh, sing the songs. But really, as far as listening to the Word of God, they never hear a single thing God says. Those people are going to be devastated and they're going to have challenges in their life. Why? Because they decided not to listen to God. And the Bible makes it very clear when we choose not to listen to God, we are in trouble. And so, if I'm going to listen to God, I have to give serious attention to His Word. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean for a, let's say a 12, 15 year old little boy, little girl? Now, You'll notice I'll always preach out of the King James Version. It's a reverent version. I love it. I use it. I preach out of it. I study, but I use other versions. Can I tell you my own personal reading? I read out of the Living Bible. Why? Because it's so right in your face. And so whenever I read something in Scripture, I say, Lord, what are you saying to me? Doing to others as you would have them doing to you. Father, am I doing to my wife what I'd have her do to me? Now, God don't want you to take that and put that under the nose of your husband or your wife. God wants you to read it. So the first way God speaks to us is through his word. Second of all, God speaks through his Holy Spirit and to our conscience. Now, I could take a long time just to go by the word. And here, I want you to understand something. You must, must take time for the word of God. God will, you'll never have a fulfilled life if you don't. It doesn't matter what you do in your life. Now, sometimes people will say, well, I wonder how much a pastor reads uh, in, in the Word of God. Can I tell you, and on my daily basis, no more than a couple of three chapters. Because your mind can only intake what the seat will endure. But you need to get into the Word. God speaks to the Word. And second of all, God speaks to us, and He speaks to our conscience through the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Does God know how, that you're not always in a church service? Absolutely. Most of our lives, we're living, walking, moving, doing something, aren't we? Does God want to speak to us and protect us and guide us all along the journey of life? Oh, you better believe it. And I want you to listen very carefully because God is an action-oriented God. In other words, you know, we can sit for a little while, but we've got to get up and we've got to be moving. Why? Because God's made us. He knows we want to be, up, we want to be about, about action. I want you to listen to this passage of Scripture in Acts. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now what in the world is going on there? Well, Paul and some of the other saints of God, they've gone through a region and they're on their way. Now watch this. They're traveling, they're walking, and they're on their way, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit stops them. Now, the Holy Spirit may not have sounded loud, but in their spirit and in their soul and in their heart, they knew they needed, didn't need to go. I want to ask you a question. Has the Holy Spirit ever spoken so loud to you that you looked around and maybe you thought, what, what's going on? I can tell you that He will do that. He will do it in barely. My daughter has a wonderful story out of the overflow of finding the house that she lives in. She was telling her mom and dad, she was telling her mom and me, she said, I've got to tell you what happened. She said, I was ironing. And right while I was in the middle of ironing, I just had to stop and go to the classifieds and, because this voice told me to look for a house. And uh, she was in the duplex back then, that's some years ago. And she said, so I started looking for a house and I called a realtor. And the first house she took me to, she said, I liked it, it looked pretty good. Had a swimming pool around back. Now God gets your attention and he'll redirect you. She said, we went around to the front porch, and I was thinking pretty good about it. She said, I saw a snake right on the front porch. She said, I knew that wasn't the one for me. And then she said, the realtor called me, and she said, Stephanie, I just had this house. 
come available. And uh, I want you to know it's located right down here on South Colonial. I want you to come and look at it. She looked at it, and, and uh, the Lord just led her and Kaz to purchase the house. Now, what was going on? The Holy Spirit was speaking to her conscience about the house she needed to buy. What was happening in the Apostle Paul? The Holy Spirit was speaking to his conscience, forbidding him he needed to go. Now, will not you listen carefully? Every one of us have a God-given conscience. God has given you a conscience. And God knows how to get your undivided, unequivocal attention. He loves you so much that when you're going the wrong direction, He will send the Holy Spirit and you'll just have this overwhelming restlessness. Based on Colossians 3.15. You're getting ready to make a... And you just say, I feel miserable. And so... God speaks through the Holy Spirit to your conscience. And that's what was taking place in the life of Paul. God, by the Holy Spirit, forbid him. How did the Holy Spirit speak? To his conscience, to his mind. How does the Holy Spirit speak to us? To our mind, to our conscience. In a very still, small voice. I've never had the Holy Spirit holler real loud and say, Hey, Benny. But I've had the Holy Spirit many times say, In a very quiet way. What's the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit is relaying to me. Listen. He's relaying to me the will, the agenda of God. And He is protecting me. I want to raise the largest warning flag that I can to every one of you. You ignore the Holy Spirit speaking to your conscience. And you can end up dead. I won't give you his last name, but his name is Ron. He's a good preacher friend of mine. Some years ago, he and his wife was in a travel trailer. And they were on vacation. And he was getting ready to make a turn. He took the opposite turn. He said, I just felt I shouldn't make this turn, but I took it anyway. Got out to another intersection and took a turn. He said, I still have that strong impression I shouldn't, but I went. And he and his wife about got killed. Would you listen to me very carefully? There are some times the Holy Spirit will speak to your conscience and if you ignore it, that's it. You will end up in tremendous, tremendous trouble. You could end up even dead. You say, man, that's serious. Yes, it is because our life is serious business. I wonder how many people last night died because they didn't listen to the Spirit of the living God. It spoke to their conscience. You've heard me share this story before, but it's very worthy of sharing here. I recall reading the story of a lady and her daughter. They got on an airline. And as she got on the airplane, she was sitting there. And as she was sitting there, she just, the Holy Spirit was speaking to her conscience, get off the plane. There was nothing else said, get off the plane. I mean, there was no explanation, get off the plane. She told the flight attendant, she said, I've got to get off the plane. She said, we're getting ready to leave. She said, I've got to get off the plane. So she got her little bag, got off the plane. She had no understanding, no idea why she was getting off the plane, but she deboarded the plane and frustrated, but the Holy Spirit spoke to her. And she didn't understand why she was getting off the plane until 25 minutes later. The plane and all inside went down in a crash. You say, did God just speak to that one lady and her her and get her off? No, I wonder how many other people God tried to speak to and they wouldn't listen. Do you realize your life is serious business to holy God? God loves you and wants to speak to you. Why are there people in hell today? Because they didn't listen to the Spirit of the living God speak to their conscience. And they died separated from God. And now they're in hell for all of eternity. And folks, they're not getting out. The Bible says the Holy Spirit speaks to us through our conscience. You ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit and you can be in tremendous trouble. Listen, God always makes clear what He says to us. And the second way that God speaks, as I said, is through the Holy Spirit, through our conscience. Whenever God came, brought me to faith. God's Spirit spoke to my conscience through the Holy Spirit. 
I knew that faith was the place to be because God's spirit. Now, there's no place in the Bible that I could find, dear Benny, go to Faith Baptist Church. You know, I've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. There's not a verse in there that says, dear Benny Bush, go to Faith Baptist Church. But you know what? The Holy Spirit spoke to my conscience. Now, listen carefully. If you're too busy, you don't have time, I just want to give you a warning. You can be in serious trouble. Because God will not make you make right decisions. And then third, God speaks to us through other people. Man, I'm so glad that God does this, but can I tell you, this is probably one of the ways that we ignore the most. 2 Samuel 12, 1, listen carefully. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came to him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Now, I won't go into the entire story, but this is the story about David sin against Bathsheba. David was so busy, he was so busy with his life, he was so busy trying to run a, a kingdom that he wasn't listening to God, he wasn't listening to anybody else. And so God brought Nathan into his life. Now I want you to look at the very first words. And the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Do you realize it's a serious thing sometimes when you ignore people around you? You know, when you look in this text, God wants you and me to understand that He knows us. He knows our frame of reference. He knows some people are hard of hearing. You know, I mean, I don't mean physically hard of hearing. I mean spiritually hard of hearing. And so what does God do? This is the way David was. So what did He do? He brought Nathan into David's life. And Nathan gave an announcement from God. If God gave an announcement about your life today, what would it be? Would an announcement from God to your life be you're out of the will of God so far that you won't, won't listen? But I want you to listen. God knew David's sin. God knew what David had done. And God wanted David to get right. Had God chalked David off? No, he had had God said, David, I, I'm sick and tired of you? No, he didn't. If you think that you've done something so big, so bad, so major, so tremendous, you misunderstand the grace of God. I was telling Charlotte just the other day, I was just scanning through social media, and sometimes you can only take so much and just look and you, know, you want to just you know, find out, but then you don't social media just show you the grace of God in an amazing way? Amen. And here's the reality. God will speak to you through others. Now I want you to listen. Sometimes, men, it may be your wife. Sometimes it may be your pastor. It may be somebody else. Sometimes it may be your son or your daughter. There have been times in my life when I really wasn't thinking about it and God brought Stephanie into my life she said something I wasn't thinking about but she said something and that's what I needed to hear now I want you to understand look at the people around your life whenever God is about ready to say something to your life and you're not listening to his word or you're not listening to the Holy Spirit God may well bring somebody right in front of your face now, why is that so important? Because God loves you. Now think about it for a moment. Nathan is in the presence of David the king. Nathan could have been put to death immediately for what he was about ready to say. But Nathan was going to say it no matter what. Why? Because the Lord said it. It's so important to understand that whenever the Lord sends us, ours is just to bear the, bear the message. Ours is just to say what God said. You know I shared with you different times about me coming to a revival meeting, a friend of mine in Shepherdsville. And as I approached them, what was going on, the difficulty they both were having. And on a Wednesday morning, God led me to read just a passage of Scripture to them. And I thought, he's going to either smack me in the face 
because it was a very confrontational passage of Scripture. Or he was going to listen. I honestly felt that way. From the fiber of my being, I thought he is going to punch me right in the face. Or he's going to listen. Could it be that you're here this morning God brought you this morning. He knew what's going on in your life. And God brought you here so you could hear God's servant speak to you in love, but remind you, listen, you ignore what God says to you through his word, and you're going to be in a mess, maybe an eternal mess. And you see, the Bible makes it very clear. Nathan pointed his finger. You're the man. You're the woman. You're the man. You're the woman. You're the man. You're the woman. In other words, Nathan pinned David against the wall. But it wasn't David. And it wasn't Nathan. It was God. Through the years, I've heard people say things like this to me. Was you at my house this past week? Did you see what I was doing this past week? No. Do you understand what's happening when that happened? God's finger. You ignore what God says through His Word, through the Holy Spirit, through some person He sends into your life. And you know what He may well do? He may just let you go. You know, there's a world of people out there, they're just, God just let them go. You say, surely not, yeah. Have you ever known somebody that's not teachable and no matter what you do, they're never going to learn. So what do you do? You just let them go. And God loves us enough and He says, those who are willing to listen to me, I want to speak to you through my Word. I want to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. And I want to speak to you through others. That's why. Now listen carefully, men. Now wives, I know if you're right close to your husband, you're going to nudge him. Listen to your wife. Listen to your spouse. First church I pastored, I was about ready to resign. I shouldn't resign. But someone said something to me. I thought, I don't want to cause a ripple. Now my wife, she said these words. That's all she said. She said, honey, stand your ground. I'd done nothing wrong. I hadn't hurt anybody. Now that was a positive word. There's also those other words too that God uses to speak. You know why? God knows sometimes we're not listening any other way. And your spouse is a good source of accountability. You say, oh, my spouse, I don't pay any attention. You're foolish if you don't. I want to say that again and again. You are foolish and unwise if you say, I'm not going to pay attention to my spouse. Don't you know that God loves you? Now, you say, well, they're an unbeliever. They're an unbeliever. Pray for them that they come to Christ. Still yet, God can use whatever. He spoke through a, a, a donkey. So God can speak of whatever means He wants. But learn to listen to others. Learn to listen to other people. And can I tell you, one of the things in, in life, you put your spiritual antennas on, and it's amazing what God says through your wife, through your husband, through your children. And then lastly, God speaks through circumstances. Now, circumstances are not the best way in which God speaks, but they are ways in which God speaks. I want you to follow along in this copy of the Scripture in, the, in your row. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, and thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the floor, and if the do be on the fleece only, and it be dry all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early in the morning and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me. I will speak with this once. Let me prove. I pray thee, this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Now what in the world is God doing? God is speaking to Gideon through situations and through circumstances. 
Now, I want you to listen carefully. Don't seek God through fleeces first. But there are times that God does speak to us through circumstances. There are times in which God will give you something and circumstances just show you that his will is this or this. Gideon, he was leading a direction of God. And he said, now, I don't want to be unwise. I know you've called me to lead the army of Israel. But I need some, I need some clarification because that's a lot of people to lead. He said, here's my fleece. Let it be wet in the midst of dry grass the first morning. And then I ask you, let it be dry in the midst of wet grass. What was Gideon doing? He was asking God to speak to him through circumstances. Now listen carefully. God loves you and knows you intimately, personally, and he loves you with all of his eternal being. And there are some times in life that God speaks to us through circumstances. Maybe just like what happened in Stephanie's life. God was saying, I don't want you to buy that house. And so I'm going to cause, now listen carefully. Did God send that little slithery snake up on that little porch so that it would be there to redirect her life? Well, let me ask you something. What is God not in? Isn't God completely sovereign over all the universe? Amen? God speaks through whatever he wants. And if God knew that a little slithery snake would speak to my daughter, that she shouldn't buy that house, what did he do? Spoke to her through circumstances. Listen carefully. I have watched over and over and over again. If you're walking in the will of God, trying to follow God's ways, trying to follow God's word, and you're not seeking circumstances, God will time and time and time again speak to you through circumstances. Why did God do that to Gideon? He needed encouragement. He needed guidance. He needed direction. And maybe you're here this morning. You're sitting here this morning. You say, you know, I don't have any clue why I'm in Faith Baptist Church this morning. You know, if you say that, you're not the first to say that. I had one lady who came by the church and she said, you know, I don't know why I came to faith. I just saw the sign pulled in. When I pulled in, I knew God wanted me to be here. What was God doing? God was using circumstances to speak to her life. Why? Because, listen, the Lord orchestrates the steps of the righteous. Now watch this. Do you know how many steps you're going to take today? Now you say, well, I've got a Fitbit, so I know I'm going to take about 6,000 steps. Well, maybe, maybe some. But watch this. Now you're going to say, Pastor, that's very unimpressive. Did God know exactly the steps I was going to take just then? I had no idea I was going to pause right there, but the Father knew. Now listen carefully. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered. That means that God in His providence will speak to you through circumstances and sometimes they're immediate. I mean they're very immediate. You don't know why. But God is speaking to you through circumstances. God is speaking to you because he loves you. He's speaking to you because he wants you to make the right decision. And sometimes God can only speak to you because you've got to make a decision quickly. You've got to make a decision fast. And so that's important to do. Now listen carefully. Are you listening to God though? Are you listening to God speak to you through circumstances? Are you listening to God speak through the Holy Spirit? Are you listening to God speak through His Word? Heavenly Father, we thank You so much.